Welcome on the show. Like I always say, I'm not a fan of Monday mornings, but all the same, it's a tough job, but somebody has to do it. It's Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. Welcome on the show. Now, Quara United Football Club of Ilori returned to the top spot in the ongoing 2020-2021 Nigeria Professional Football League, MPFL, on Sunday in emphatic fashion by recording the season's biggest win. They whipped visiting Ademola United of Yola 5-0 to keep their guests in the bottom position of the 20 club competitions table after match day 17. The league leaders had temporarily dropped to the second position in the last two match days, but on Sunday they were as ruthless as their position demands. But the biggest result of the day include that of Kano Pillars, who beat host Wiki Tourist of Bochi 2-1 to move from third place into the second position. Aqua United of Rio also boasted their campaign with an away win, beating host MFMFC of Lagos 2-1 and jumping into third place from fifth place. The Lobby Stars of Makadi moved from 10th place to 7th after beating Rivers United of Port Harcourt, who remained in 6th place. Abia Warriors of Oman here were 3-1 winners over visiting Katina United, moving from 12th to 8th. Now, joining me this morning is what you, who you can call in Nigerian League Encyclopedia. Let's welcome sports analyst Dumnadi Okonta. Dumnadi, good morning. Good morning, Wale. How, thank you very much for coming on the show on such a short notice. Thank you very much. Let's start with the league first off. Let's start with the fact that Jude gets the first hat trick of the season for Kora United and keeps them on top of the league. Well, I think Kora United um, actually this point punching above their weight because last season if not for the COVID-19 they were playing in the second division um, so um, this time they went back saw what they did wrong last season and um, made those adjustments and you saw the kind of player they had they had um, Champions League winner former Super League goalkeeper Bila Enigba and a couple of other players to beef up the team so I think you are seeing the results even though they may not win the league but at least they are punching up with their way. Because each time Kora United gets to the Premier League, each time, and I will give you a record, they get back to the National League. But last season, COVID-19 rescued them. So well, I'm not surprised at what is happening at Kora United because they learned a few lessons from last season. And they get Adama side that is out of sorts right from last season. Adama United last season were in this position from the first week to the, to the time the league was suspended because of COVID-19. This season again, they started like this, and they are still down, down. They never moved up from that position. So we are expecting, but the score line is what, what, um, what flattered me, because five new. Let me quote you, Nomadi. Should I quote you and say that Kuala United said this is just initial gragra? No, I'm not saying initial gragra, because if you look at the table now, final was on 30 points, Candy Plus is on 30 points. Rangers have an outstanding game. Rangers on 27 points against Nasarawa. Nasarawa also on 27 points. They are playing against Rangers. Eimba has three games. Eimba has a game today. So it's also going to change the whole complexion of the table if the, all these games are concluded by the end of today. And possibly Thursday when Eimba will play MFM in one of the scheduled games. I think MFM have gotten lessons to learn now. A way, a, they, they host Aqua at home and they lose. 2-1. So uh, see, this, this is the first time Aqua United is going to be winning in Lagos against MFM. Their best ever result before yesterday's game was uh, March 21st, 2017, when they played the goalless draw with MFM at Agege Stadium. Every other result, apart from those two results, yesterday's result and the one I mentioned earlier, MFM had this in 3 nil. So, but you look at this Aqua United squad, they were way through side, pretty experienced. And you, you could see the, you could see the result at the end of the day. MFM on Yes, on that day, we are in, we are in person. Okay, now um, let's look at this particular issue. I will go to other issues later, but let's come to the fact that we are seeing more away wins in our league now, unlike before, which I think is a good thing. Well, talking about away wins, um, yes, we have seen it. You know, the, the beauty of it is that when people know that a lot of these things, a lot of those factors that uh, make some teams not to play on the road have been taken out or have continued to be, um, be decimated. 
players will be forced to come out. And football has changed all over the world. Nobody cares about home, nobody cares about the weight. You, like somebody will tell me, um, the only advantage you have, home advantage you have, is to do your own work. Play very well at home. If you don't play very well at home, you lose at home. So it's not just, it's not just, it's not, uh, it's not just about. So we, we are seeing the real victory, and we hope it continues. Now, we are seeing better officiating in our matches these days. And um, if you were to say, okay, if you were Dubnodin and you said there was going to be a solution, what would you say should be done so our leagues actually improve it at this point? Things are getting better. But would you say that because we, now, we are now on TV, MPFL TV now, at least one match a day, maybe that is helping our league now. Maybe now people are now officiating better, crowd are now getting better controlled now. Maybe because TV is involved now. Yeah, these are factors you mentioned. They are also they are also critical in ensuring that referee. But you know these days, no matter even if you don't even if you don't um, play these games on TV, the truth of the matter is that the internet, the social media, is also going to <laughs> it's also going to, it's going to, it's going to catch you if you eventually want to play a fast one. Yeah. So the referees are aware, and these grades are very important. If you don't do well at home on domestic, you will never officiate any FIFA game. So you have to come up your game if you want to if you want to go global. So that's just it. Now, Dunali, you are the go-to man when it comes to um, the Nigerian league, based on my age grade, yeah. You know, and I'm asking this question. I've also always asked. I have watched our leagues week in, week out at a point, and I know that we have very talented, very good players there. But General Ross says nothing good can come out of our league. He doesn't want anybody in the Super League from the Nigerian league. Um, a lot of people have had this argument and had this argument with several people. They don't realize it. When you do that, now look at what COVID-19 has taught us. <laughs> you have to be, you have to, you have to, you have to resort to getting these own boys to play for this national team. If you say the coach, you say the team, the, the, the own boys are not good. I ask myself, Ahmed Musa came from where? Okay, Kalo came from where? Where did all these boys come from? So that's the issue. I don't have a problem. You can get the best anywhere in the world, but don't try as much as possible to to sidestep some people or deliberately want to shut some people out of the national team because they play in Nigeria. Even now, say, we have now switched from foreign base to foreign born. So the question is, how do you determine whether the boys on the domestic team are not good or not to play for the national? What is so special about the Super Eagles that you think anybody cannot play for the Super Eagles? Uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask a question that confuses me all the time. Alo Yago is contented with letting General Raw go on the internet and bring goalkeepers from Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. And then Joseph Yobo doesn't go and watch any match at all. Who is looking out for the Nigerian based boys? Um, Wally, yeah. you know, those coaches have no control over the national team selection. But that's their they are job just there to fill in the numbers. Okay. But what's their job there? The job is to give General Rod a list of names and let General Rod see it and pick. General Rod, see, it is because of the situation with COVID-19 that General is now coming out to say we want to search for the home base boys. And also, it's also as a fallout of the poor result against Sierra Leone in Benin and in, uh, in Freetown. And also the meeting they have with the minister. And the minister saying you have to get to include some of these home boys in this thing. Including the boys from the home boys, not just not to make them feel happy or to make them feel good. The fact that create a system where you have a, a, a formidable home bo um, team, both home and away, so that you know who you can call on at any shortest possible time. Not running air can't like somebody who just woke up from his dream. Okay, now, um, the good thing is that, uh, I'm, 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 let me come to the last question first. Wait. Now, did Genoro have to wait for the sports minister to insist that you must go to our boys before you did it? Is there a written document that says this is, you must improve our Nigerian league while you are the coach of the Super Eagles? You see, the problem we have with the general contract is this. Each time they appoint a Nigerian as the coach of the national team, he's also a coach of the home base team. Yes. Keshi has done it. Well, said, did this. But why is general not the coach of the home base team? That's the biggest challenge. And when it's come to the home base team, you hand you give it to the assistant to handle. But when the Nigeria is in charge of the, team, the main super eagles, it's also in charge of the home eagles. That's why you find out that Kessie also succeeded with the home boys. I remember. So general is far, is far, is far detached from the team. I remember Dumnodi. Let me quote him. 
the coach of the Ivorian national team, Cote d'Ivoire, when we played them under Keshi in the semi-finals, he wrote, he said after the match, he said, listen, if I had a list of threats that would give me problems in that match, Sunday Mba would not be my list. And Sunday Mba caused the problem. And it was home base then. So this argument, whether home or, or with the home or foreign base, I mean, I'm just also not, I'm seeing it from a different perspective. Look at what COVID-19 has brought us, has brought for us now. There are restrictions, traveling restrictions all over the world. Our players are not allowed to come to the country. So what do you do? That's why you need to come to create a system where you have both home and away play, players and make it very competitive. Not that like you just look somebody and say, ah, now spare tire. You can't and put. Because what they are doing now, they are looking for spare tire. Okay. Um, I'm looking for spare tire. Okay. Let this me should look, not be. Let me ask this question now. You say you don't want to use home based players. Our home based players have been playing football week in, week out at this point now. Abby? Now, yes. the Benin Republic coach. <laughs> Their most influential player, Sesenyo, the captain, was dropped because he was clubless. But in Nigeria's case, you don't want to use Nigerian boys who play week in, week out. But you bring in Anas Ahmed Musa, who is clubless, and to come and be our captain still, when some teams are dropping their captains because they are clubless. You see, the Ahmed Musa issues. A lot of people say it's not going to be, they're not as common to say it's a non playing captain. What does that mean? Which for me, I may not have a problem with you. But if eventually a man is feeded in any of these games, I'm going to question him. When you say he's not playing campaign, he may be part of the team, he's not playing, which is understandable. Okay, now, Dimadi, for the first time in a very long time, over 10 years, the Super Eagles play in Lagos. We hear Ahmed Musa and some other six members of the team are already in camp as we speak, as of last night. Ahmed Musa is in camp too, and they play in Lagos for the first time. What does this bring to Lagos, testing Balogu precisely? Um, let me correct you. Ahmed Musa is not playing for the, in Lagos for the first time. His first, his first I'm saying the team game after for 10 the Super years. Eagles. Uh, okay, his first game for the Super Eagles was in Lagos. Hmm. On that year, year. But now they are coming to Lagos. What does this do that for Lagos? <laughs> they should also do, go, and go, to, go and find out about Lagos fans and Super Eagles and the kind of results Super Eagles. Lagos fans don't fans any team. If you don't play well, they switch loyalty, they switch supportership. If you play well, they support you. But well, the pandemic is still here. How do we ensure people stay COVID free during this match? They are expecting 7,200 or something people at that stadium. How do they? Get them apart and make sure COVID-19 does not happen to happen there. The truth of the matter is that they didn't specify the number that will be there. I don't know who came up with the 7,000. They said 30%. Some said 10, some said 7,000. 30% can be any number. But the fact is that if that gives, gives you a go-ahead, it is the country government that will determine whether you use France or not. So they have to, they have to go to the presidential tax force on COVID-19 to get the clearance. Before they ever, ever go fast, have, have, they, the have they done that? I don't know, but they are still working with it. They are still working on it because we have between now and 30th, which is just seven, seven, I mean, eight days from now. Dumnadi, if you have your opinion, um, would you advise that the NFF creates a home based super egos for times like this? Most of these clubs are refusing to give their players out. COVID 19, Ian Acho might not leave. Indeed, you might not leave. You see, creating an own base Super Eagles is not a new phenomenon. Keshi did this when Keshi was appointed coach of the Super Eagles. He worked with them. That was his style form. We didn't sustain it because we had a foreign coach. Who depends on boys who are foreign born. This is not, let's just go back to that Keshi's template. It's simple. We don't need to set up a new system again. Go back to the template and let's kick off from there. Okay, Dumnadi, I want to thank you very much. Thank for you very much. Show. Thank you very much for your insightful interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. That was Dumnadi well, Okonta on the show no. this morning. Of course, um, he'll be here again soon, just before the match, before the Super Eagles um, qualify against um, Lesotho. That will be in Testing Balogu Stadium in Suleri. Now, Arsenal came from three goals down to rescue a point in a stunning game against London rivals West Ham in the Premier League. The Hammers raced into a three-goal lead at London Stadium through Jesse Lingard, Jared Bowen, and Thomas Sutek, who touched in a Mikel Antonio header. 
The visitors gave themselves hope when an Alexander Lacazette effort went in off Susek for an own goal just before half time. West Ham defender Craig Dawson turned in Arsenal fullback Callum Chambers' low cross from another, from another own, own goal in the 61st minute. Now Lacazette completed the comeback with a thumping header from Nicholas Pepper's cross before both sides had lit chances to win the game. Now, Pep Guardiola insists his side does have weaknesses, and anyone that suggests otherwise is wrong to do so. Man City beat Everton 2 0 in the FA Cup semi finals on Saturday, keeping hopes of an unprecedented quadruple alive. E.K. Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne scored in the final six minutes to secure progression in the competition. Guardiola insists that his team is far from perfect and says they must remain focused until the end of the season to win trophies. I know, I know perfectly. Uh, saying that, there are more positive and negative things, but now it's coming. <coughs> now we're going to break. We're going to celebrate, or enjoy our families, the players with international breaks. And when I come back, two months, the end of the season. And every game will be closer to to play, to be close to, to, to win the titles. But still, there are many, many games. And now what I'm thinking, not today, but uh, I know myself and other team was going to be tall. So Leicester, 1-5, at home, how strong they are. And after Champions League, what can I say? And after Leeds, Leeds is the worst opening we can play between quarterfinal and Champions League, the worst. So, and uh, yeah, we have 40 points and uh, yeah, one game more, so maybe it's 11. And still we have to win four or five games to be champion of the Premier League and no cut games, we have to, everything can happen. So this game, in one corner, one throw-in, one situation, they score a goal. Maybe you are not able to, to overcome the game. This game is this kind of situation. But the spirit and the commitment and the focus on every play is fantastic. And that's why we achieve what we achieve in these four months. I will never forget. You cannot but love Pep Guardiola. When he says he has a tough match ahead, you would think he would call teams like Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United. He says the worst team to meet right now, if you ask me, before the next match he has is Leeds. Leeds are the super banana peel this season. They will peel you, you will fall. You know, and he says, of all, of all the teams he's going to meet right now, the one he's scared of the most, Guardiola, says Leeds. Wow. Eight-time winners. Chelsea moved into the FA Cup semi-finals with a hard-fought home win against Sheffield United. The Blues went ahead in fortunate circumstances as Ben Chilwell's low cross was stirred into his own net by Blades midfielder Oliver Norwood. Christian Pulisic was twice denied by away goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale and Callum hudson odoi shot over as hosts looked to finish the game off. David McGoldrick wasted a glorious ch chance to equalise as he sent a close-range diving header, wide following John Lundstrom's right-wing cross before home goalkeeper Kepa Arizabalaga saved from Oliver McBurney. No, it's the 14th match in a row, and uh, I could feel a bit of... I could feel us after the game against Atletico a bit tired, um, I could feel a big relief uh, in the team, which is also absolutely normal. I could feel that this was a huge effort also mentally against Atletico. After that, a big relief. Then you have uh, a lot of changes made from me, of course, in the, in the squad. And you have um, the, the players leaving right now for international duties. There is a lot, a lot of things to organize, many unclear situations, travel, not travel, how is uh, the return. So it was a it was a moment where when we arrived where we arrived also yesterday when we prepared the match and today where I did not feel one hundred percent comfortable or like sure that we can continue on the same level. So I even spoke to the team before and said let's let's don't over expect from ourselves in this situation. Um, do a serious do a serious performance, try to control the match, work hard for it and 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 take the, the little detail serious and don't overexpect from ourselves. So first half was okay. Second half after the chance from Christian to finish the game, uh, which we didn't which we didn't take was uh, we, we lost control. We, we lost the concentration, we lost the momentum. Before I go to the next story, I want to state that I felt Manchester United played with no purpose in that match. And Leicester came to the party, partying like they had something to win and not everything to lose. Sokshia and his men came there without any purpose, as if they were scared to injure their legs, as if they were actually planning to go and play for their countries in the qualifiers. 
They put everything into the game except for their, 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 the game itself. That, like everybody was actually keeping their legs, waiting for international break so they can go and play qualifiers. Nobody wanted to get injured. But Lister put everything into it and man, you had to pay for it. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer felt the effects of too many games. Finally caught up on his players for the Manchester United's 3-1 loss to Leicester City in the FA Cup quarterfinals. Despite missing Greenwood's first half equaliser, two goals from Kedichi Inacho, either side of a Yuri Tillemans strike. So United dumped out of the competition after Solskjaer opted to rest talisman Bruno Fernandes. You're always disappointed, especially when you when it's the end of the line uh, of a cup run. We, um, we just couldn't find a normal uh, spark and brightness, energy. I think all the, the games maybe have uh, caught up with us. Thursday night was a big, big night for us. And today we just didn't have that zip we, uh, we needed to, uh, to create chances and to stop calls. Every team selection has reasons behind it. And of course, Bruno has played um, very, very much football. I think Thursday night, he he broke all, all his records of uh, statistic, physically, st statistically. And, you know, the boy is not um, uh, inhuman. He is also a human being. He's played a game every three or four days, really. And uh, it was a chance uh, to start both Donny and Paul. Uh, so, um, and so, but the accumulation of games maybe caught up with us, uh, and with Bruno as well. I know he wants to play. Sometimes you you make decisions for the for the benefit of both the team and him. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer loses one game, and all the fans are saying Ole go. I think the most um, the most impatient people in the world are football fans. He loses one game. And they say, Ole go. Kelechi Yenacho, our very own, my brother. Wow. I hope Lister will let him come for the qualifiers. Because the last match he played, it was a hard trick. Against Man United, a brace. This guy is smoking. Somebody has to stop him, really. And sometimes I feel like Man City will feel like we shouldn't have let this guy go. You see, really? Because I think the most instrumental players in the Lister City team, as we speak now, are Wilfred Indidi in midfield. And he Nacho up front. In fact, he Nacho is creating more waves than even Jamie Vardy, who was the star boy of the team. Those days, Nacho is now the star boy now. In midfield is Indy D. Two Nigerian boys. You can't be more proud of Nigeria than now. We, but apart from football, sports, every sphere, you can't be more proud of Nigeria than right now. We are doing so well everywhere in the world, in every sphere. And I'm proud of my men. I'm a Man U fan. I'm sad, but I'm happy. It was Kelechi that really happened. At least, Nasi home day, you know. Lionel Messi celebrated becoming Barcelona's highest appearance maker of all time by scoring twice as his rampant side crushed a real side that 6-1 away in La Liga on Sunday with a stunning team display. Antoine Griezmann opened the scoring by netting against his old club in the 36th minute and right back Sergino Dest stretched Barca's lead shortly before halftime after latching on to a sweeping pass from Messi. Ousmane Dembele struck his side's fifth goal of the night in the 71st minute, after a brilliant solo run, while Sosaidat and uh, Baden Texar hit arguably the best goal of the game to give his side a rare moment of joy. Messi, however, had the final say, finishing off a flowing team move in the 89th minute to score his 23rd league goal of the season, increasing his lead at the top of the scoring charts. The victory took Barca above Real Madrid into second place in the standings on 62 points, four behind leaders Atletico Madrid with 10 games left to play. Serena Williams will not compete at this week's Miami Open as a 23 times Grand Slam singles champion recovers from oral surgery. 39 year old Florida resident has won the Miami Open a record eight times and joins big names including Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, and Roger Federer in missing the event. Williams fell to eventual champion Naomi Osaka in the semi finals of the Serena Open last month. World number seven Alexander Zverev recovered from an uncertain start to beat Stefano Sissipas. 6476 in a thrilling Mexican Open final in Acapulco and land his 14th ATP title. 23 year old German lost the final of the hardcore tournament to Nick Kyriogos in 2019 and quickly went 4 1 down to the Greek top seed on Sunday. At one point, completely missing the ball when attempting an overhead smash. Tsitsipas was unable to maintain the level of tennis he displayed in the first five games, however, and second seed Zverev worked his way back into the contest, 
reeling off the last five games to seal the sense. It's amazing. Uh, two years ago, my brother in the doubles lost the top final to Kyrgios, and now I'm extremely happy to, to finally win the singles trophy, and this means a lot to me. Congratulations, Zverev. Giannis Antetokounmpo says he's happy the streak in Milwaukee box is flying under the radar this season. Following their win over the San Antonio Spores, the Bucks extended their winning streak to six games at the top of the Spores, 120-113 behind superstar Antetokounmpo, 26 points, and joins career-high 15 assists on Saturday. Unlike the two previous seasons, the Bucks have not terminated headlines, instead taking a box seat to the Eastern Conference, leading Philadelphia 76ers and stars to the Brooklyn Nets. A great player. Uh, he's been in the league for a while now. Uh, great bet. Uh, he knows what he's about. Um, he's going to bring physicality, leadership in our team. Um, and we need that. You know, we need that. We need guys that can make shots, guys can uh, defend. Uh, he's going to help us a lot. Um, it's crazy. You know, it's, this is the first game that he's been here. I think he's had one practice with us. But, you know, when he played today, he was right in it. He, like, he fit right in our system because he plays the right way. He spaces the floor, plays hard. Uh, it's amazing to play with. Obviously, I'm going to miss my guys, you know, DJ, um, Paul DJ and uh, Tori. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, we have a new addition to the team. We've got to welcome him the right way and uh, moving forward. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, play well together and uh, win some games together. It's big. It's big. You know, like, he's always he's always loud. Even if even if he, when he's in the bench, he's always talking. He's talking to the guys in the bench. He's talking to the guys to the court. The quality, this is his first day here, you know, and uh, we need that. We need somebody that's going to be loud all the time. We need somebody to, you know, keep, you know, feeding us with our feedback and uh, so we can play the right way. You know, when he comes to the court, he is aware of everything. Giannis Antetokounmpo, this is Nigerian. Name is Adetokounmpo, but he's, he's doing it the Greek style now. That's all we can take on the show today. Join us same time tomorrow now. On the show tomorrow, we're talking about the Nigerian Cricket League. And we have the Vice President Nigeria Cricket Federation, Uya Pata, on the show tomorrow to talk about the Nigeria Cricket League pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, okay? That's what we can take on the show today. Join us same time tomorrow. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.